everybody. Thank you so much for joining. My name is Caitlin and I am the owner of 614 Handcrafted plus a couple other businesses and nonprofits. So the purpose of my YouTube channel is to go for pretty much anything business, uh, whether it's woodworking, sewing, um, how to start a business, uh, just really anything in general, uh, whenever it comes to uh, business focuses, uh, that is what I'm here for. So um, I'm just starting this YouTube journey. I have recorded videos um, in the past, but I hope you enjoy what you see. And if you do, or if you get anything helpful from this video, please like the video and subscribe as there will be more. Today, we are going to go over how to embroider on any nylon webbing, whether it's for a dog collar, a keychain, um, a lanyard, anything whenever it comes to nylon webbing. So I did this recently on my brand new embroidery machine and I posted it on a embroidery beginners YouTube channel and I had a ton of questions. The post blew up and it said, how do you do this? I always struggle with this. Um, how do you um, do it without backing? How do you make sure the the stitches don't jump? Things like that. So that is what I am going to go over today. So um, I hope you enjoy it. And please let me know if you have any questions in the comments or any ideas that you do differently. And I will begin that soon. All right, so admittedly, I have recorded this video twice, so um, I am trying my hardest to make this as short as I possibly can. Um, whenever it comes to learning videos, I know you really just want to find the answer, so I am going to try, if I can figure it out, I'm going to try to do timestamps so you can skip. So if you already know how to do things like how to upload a font, or how to um, do names prior to putting them on your embroidery machine, feel free to skip ahead to the section that you need to whenever it comes to actually uh, stitching on your embroidery machine. So I hope that I'm able to do that for you. If not, I will put it in the description as to where you can skip to um, minute wise in the video. So before I start out, I wanna to touch on a few things. What you're gonna need and then most importantly, I, I want to say that I am not an, expo an expert embroiderer. So the reason why I say that is because you, if you are not an expert or you are just starting, this is one of my first project I, projects I ever did on an embroidery machine. So you can definitely do this. Um, I am going to go over two different ways to do this. Um, I'm going to go over how I started, which I think would be beneficial for anybody who has never done it before, because it's not like foolproof, right? But um, I mean, I think it would really help. Secondary, the second way is going to give you a different idea of how to do it. And you can combine, you can take things away, you can combine the, combine the two ideas. Um, I just hope that in the end, what it does is it allows you to be able to put out an awesome um, stitch on a nylon webbing. So um, secondary, what you are going to need is um, the following. So you are obviously going to need nylon webbing. So what I'm going to show you on today is just um, really cheap nylon webbing um, that I got from Hobby Lobby. I mean, it's $1.99 and it's not like expensive nylon webbing. Um, normally what I would utilize is a softer um, nylon webbing like this. It is it is more like lanyard style. I guess you could say dog collar wise, but um, these are the dog collars that I have made. Um, when it comes to this nylon webbing, I will show you where I get that briefly in the video. Um, I am not sponsored by anybody whenever it comes to these videos um, currently. So if I am ever sponsored by anybody, um, I will make sure to, to let you know. But as of right now, anything that I go over is just specifically stuff that I have tried and, and has worked. So secondary to that, you are going to need um, your, um, sorry, you're going to need your hoop. Um, everything that I do today is going to be on the hoop. That's one of the things that people wonder how you do that. You are going to need your hoop. I do not use a belt hoop. I do not use any specialized 
um, hoop for this. I just use a regular flat hoop that came with my embroidery machine. You're going to need a needle. I use a 90 embroidery uh, specific needle. I am a huge proponent that the type of needle that you utilize in your machine is truly the starting place for the errors that you are having. So when you think about a needle, there's a bevel on a needle and the bevel is where the thread actually rests and whenever it goes into whatever you're sewing. So if you are getting any type of um, tension issues or where your thread keeps breaking, just think about if that thread is not resting at the right spot, depending on the fabric that you are utilizing, it is rubbing every single time it goes in and out of that fabric. So it's creating tension every single time. It is creating friction every single time it comes in and out. So um, that is going to cause your thread to break more often. It's going to cause tension issues. Um, personally, for this, for the thicker um, <clears throat> types of materials, I utilize a 90 embroidery specific needle. And then um, outside of that, you're obviously going to need scissors, embroidery thread. I, I don't think you need any type of specific embroidery thread. Um, the embroidery thread that I'm going to use today is Sewology. I bought it at Hobby Lobby for 75 cents whenever it was on sale. It's not some strong embroidery thread to be specific. Um, it is just a regular, regular embroidery thread. Um, you're obviously going to, need, going to need scissors for today's project. And then lastly, uh, you're going to need some type of stabilizer. So personally, what I utilize is water soluble st stabilizer for this. But I am going to show you a way to do this if you do not have access to water soluble st stabilizer. If you're just starting out, things can be expensive. So I understand that you're going to want to be able to try what we are doing, but not necessarily utilize uh, or go out and buy something new right so um specifically as to what we are going to go over in today's video is the way i do my dog collars and keychains is i try to eliminate the stabilizers showing on the back so if i think about a dog collar for example right anything additional rubbing on that dog's neck is going to cause knots in the fur or irritation um a lot of people use like spray adhesive or like adhesive tape um, on their dog collars, whatever they're doing this. I just don't think you can remove it completely. So I, I do utilize it in certain parts of um, whenever we're doing this, but I don't utilize it where most people do, I guess I should say. Um, and then lastly, what, um, <clears throat> what was I saying? Right. So anyways, um, so I, what is specific about this video is how to make something without that stabilizer showing on the back. So I'm going to show you two different ways to do that. Um, I did forget to mention that you do need, um, if you want to do it one of these two ways, you do need uh, double sided tape, whether it's fabric tape um, and then uh, needles. So any type of needle that's available to you. So whenever it comes to the specific um, double-sided tape that I use is not anything um, special. It's just a Dritz um, Place Me Perfectly tape. Um, like I said, I use the Sewology thread. Um, I'm just gonna use regular, you know, pins for um, pinning and then just regular cheap nylon um, webbing for this. So let's go ahead and get started and I'm gonna show you um, where, where to begin. All right, so when you first get started with a any type of thicker fabric, what I always recommend is match the font type that you are doing with that. So you want a thicker font type um, to match a thicker fabric. So I think that if you choose a thinner um, font type, right, it's going to get hidden within that fabric. So um, and then secondary, if you have never bought a font before, fonts come in various different sizes. So um, you can actually buy a font for the size of the project that you are doing. So in this example, I know my nylon webbing is one inch, um, one inch tall. So I know that I'm going to need to find a font that is one uh, shorter than one inch, right? Because it's got to fit in there. So 
I have already found a font that I really enjoy for this project. So I'm going to go ahead and show you that font that's on here. And like I said, I don't get any type of payments um, for showing these. So this um, Creative Appliques One is an Etsy site that I found. She has a, he or she has a ton of different fonts that are on here. Um, obviously just pick one that you think uh, would work for your project but like I said choose like a thicker font for example this Liberty embroidery font is thicker this farmhouse lemonade is thicker this um, I mean like this is a thinner font right so you wouldn't want to do that this is a thicker font this varsity embroidery so when you purchase fonts just look out for what is showing on there right so for example, it this will show you what it looks like. And then within the file or with even within the photos, it will show you the different sizes that it comes in. So shout out to um, this uh, Etsy seller. I think your fonts are awesome. Um, if I were to give you any feedback, I would love a smaller font, like a 0.25 um, font, only because I do um, cat colors too. So, um, you know, I'm not a proponent of um, editing font sizes. I think it just totally skews what you are doing. So it would be awesome if we could get a smaller font size. So anyways, that's just my, my plug to this Etsy seller if, if they ever see it. So I have already downloaded this font. So if you do not know, so you purchase this font, right? It's going to go into your purchases that are in here. And then when you are in here, there's this button that's gonna say download files. So you're gonna download those into, into your computer system. So um, when you are in your computer system, you are going to want to download those into a specific file. I try to stay as organized as possible. And then um, it's gonna come as a zip folder. So whenever I do this, for example, it would download and then this one is said this font that I utilize is this this is not goodbye font so if I were to do the this is not goodbye font I'm going to right click because it would download into this file and then I would extract this font so right click and then extract all and it would extract all of those files that are on there and then instead of it having this little zipper on there it would have it would just be a blank folder right so I'm gonna go ahead and open that folder and I'm gonna just check in here and see that I have all these files. So if you have never um, actually um, utilized like a, an editor before uploading into your, into your embroidery machine, I utilize Embrilliance um, Editor. The thing about Embrilliance currently is I have the free version. So I currently only edit um, fonts in there I do not edit like pictures and fonts together because you cannot save them appropriately. So um, what you can do, though, is you can um, save the placement um, so that whenever it goes in there. Anyways, I, I digress. So I just save um, the fonts on there. And Brilliant in particular only takes this BX type font. So... Uh, it's good to make sure whenever you are downloading fonts that it comes with that font type. My embroidery mach machine, for example, only takes VP3 font files. So I always make sure that it has those two font types whenever I'm downloading. Um, and then, or at least the BX font type, right? So I am going to um, put it into the and brilliant system in VX, and I'm going to pop it out as VP3 so that my embroidery machine can um, read it. If you do not know the font type that your embroidery machine um, takes, it should be in your manual. So go and look up in your manual and see what font type specifically. Um, your machine may have different, different um, file types that it takes for font, fonts versus images. So make sure you go in there and check what the specific font type that it takes, okay? And then um, secondary to that, make sure that you um, check what type of, um, like if there's like a specific um, font file that whatever your editor utilizes or pops out. So 
With all of that being said, um, I am going to bring up the Embrilliance uh, studio here. If you don't know where to find that, you can Google Embrilliance. Um, and then I'm going to show you what to do once you are in that system. All right, so I have pulled up the Embrilliance system. I am not gonna go into too much detail as to this system because of the fact that there are a ton of videos out there. It is still new to me. I may post a video later on if you would like me to, if you enjoy the way I explain things, um, let me know and I will try to do my best to put in some of the basic items that are on here. So once you have downloaded and opened the Embrilliance system, the fonts, that um, you have on your file folder need to be transferred in here. I will say this is the easiest way I've ever transferred fonts into a system like this. Um, all you do is like drag and drop it in here. So if you, for example, let's say you only want one size to be drag and drop, you can actually specifically go in here and pick just that size and drag and drop it over there. Okay, so um, when it comes to um, just putting it in there. Oh my goodness, it is it is so easy. So um, let me see. I have already uploaded this in here. So if you were to ever upload it, it would actually give you like an alert that says, hey, this is done, right? Um, or we already uploaded this in here. So I'm going to put that on here. And then, like I said, I'm going to show you two different ways to do this. So when you are in this in brilliance, there is this letter right here. Um, this is your text. So I am going to go ahead. So the text, the default that comes up is this ABC that's on here. To edit what that says is I am going to go ahead and highlight down here in this lower right hand corner, as you can see, right above my face here. Um, let me see if I can go ahead and move this over. OK, there we go. So I'm going to go ahead and edit this right here. And I'm going to do my husband's name. Perfect. And um, it doesn't matter which way you do this. So if um, so, I'm going to have this one horizontally, right? And then to choose the font that you click on this download menu and then you do whatever font you would like to, right? So I'm gonna choose a different font because my I actually wanna choose for this project, I wanna choose this farmhouse. Yep, there we go. Um, so I'm going to, oh, I don't know why I'm trying to edit it. Why would I edit the size? So, um, okay, so I have his name here. It doesn't matter the placement. Um, that's on there. I have his name typed out. I'm going to go ahead and go to file. I'm going to go to save stitch file. And then I am going to, I am, I try to be as organized as possible. So whenever I save files, whether it's to my, um, to my file folder or to my drive specifically, um, I always put it in a specific folder for what I am doing. So I have a sewing folder, I have an embroidery folder, and then I have a font folder. So I save the, it as the name. And then again, like I said, you want to check what file your embroidery file type your embroidery machine takes. If you hit this drop down menu, there's a ton of file types that are on there. Mine does VP3, so I'm going to save it as a VP3. And then just to show you um, another way to do this. So this is obviously a horizontal. Um, let's say you wanted to do a vertical name. There are options that are up here on this upper um, corner over here. I wanted to do a vertical name. There is this multi-line font. So I am going to change my name to a different friend, for example. And then as you can see, look, it it goes um, um, it goes vertically. So I'm going to change this to so I can show you two different fonts and change this to that previous font that I showed you. And then it's going to be vertical. So um, when I do um, my hoop today, 
I'm going to, I want everything to stitch though from the left to the right or, you know, horizontally, whether it's from the left to the right or right to the left. So I am going to rotate this auto, like already in the system. You don't have to do that. You can rotate that, this on your embroidery machine. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and do that and then save this. And then again, I'm going to save it with the name. All right, so we are done within this Embrilliant system. So I'm gonna bring up my file folder because I am gonna download these to my USB drive. My embroidery machine utilizes a USB drive. Most do, unless you have a Bluetooth enabled embroidery machine. Um, let me go ahead and go to the file folder. All right, there we go. When I put too many things in the back of my thing, I get this alert, but it's not, it's not true. So um, I am going to, so as you can see, this USB drive F popped up here. That is my USB drive for my machine. So I'm going to go ahead and go and find the files that I saved, which are in the sewing file, the embroidery section. And again, it's in fonts. And then, oh, there we go. And then you should see on here the two VP3 files that I that I did. So I'm going to go ahead and copy these, copy both of those, and then drag it over. As you can see, my USB drive, the folders match. So I'm going to drag it over to the fonts. And I think I just actually saved that into the, <laughs> into the font type accidentally. So let me, before I get out of here, I'm going to edit this. So. Um, I'm going to take out the ones I've already done. And as you can see, I actually save the fonts that I do within the system within this system too. Um, in case I ever want to just do like a couple letters on my embroidery machine without editing first. So I think I saved these names in here too. I did. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and delete those. And then before you take out your USB drive, always right click on it and then click eject so it doesn't damage your USB drive. Okay, so I'm going to take that out now that it tells me it's safe to remove. And then we are going to go ahead and talk about how to put this on your hoop, okay? All right, so there are a couple things that I mentioned. I mentioned that I used water-soluble stabilizers. So really quickly, let me grab this. I want to mention, um, I'm not going to go over how to actually hoop the stabilizer on um, your hoops because, I mean, you can find that anywhere. And at this point, you should probably know how to at least hoop that. If not, I will go ahead and post a different video somewhere else on how to hoop stabilizer at some point. Um, so this is hooped as normal. I am a big proponent of hooping one set of stabilizer and reutilizing and utilizing it again. So as you can see on here, I've utilized this before. So um, <laughs> this is just hooped, and then I'm gonna show you um, what to do once this is hooped. So again, it doesn't matter if your stabilizer is water, sol water soluble, I will show you what to do if it is not. But if it is, I just put water soluble on here, and then I will show you um, how I go about editing it, uh, or placing the actual vinyl on here. Or, um, placing the, um, whatever you're putting on there, the webbing on there. Okay. Okay. So sorry, I ended up having to go to work. So, um, new day, but what I wanted to make sure, um, that I went over was, um, the two different ways that you can lay this on your hoop. So, as I was previously talking about, I'm going to show you two different ways in order to secure this on the hoop so you can embroider on it. So um, the first way I'm going to show you is to how to cut a hole in the um, stabilizer in order to um, ensure that there's no backing. And then the other way I'm going to show you is how I did it with water soluble. I'm also going to show you a couple of different ways of how to physically attach it onto the stabilizer. So um, really the purpose of showing you a couple of ways is obviously if you're a new embroiderer 
I don't want you to feel like you have to go out and buy all of these specialized stabilizers in order to do um, your project. Um, you can pretty much do a lot of things with what you have. It's just kind of getting creative with it. So I have already put the two, um, I've already put my USB drive in. I am going to do one at a time so you can see what I do. The first way um, I'm going to show you is kind of how I started out doing this when I did not have the water soluble stabilizer. Um, I do not do it this way because it just takes a lot longer. Um, I don't do it this way now, but obviously if you don't have some of the water soluble or really just in general, you don't feel comfortable um, with water soluble um, stabilizer or, you know, this is your preferred way because, you know, just in general, you like the way it's done, I want to show you. So what I have done is I have placed the first name on my, um, on my machine here. And then I, as you can see, there is nothing currently on my, um, on my stable, on my stabilizer. So I've not put any fabric or anything on there. So what I am going to do first is in my machine allows me, it allows me to do a tack down stitch. So basically the tack down stitch does a square around whatever item it is that you're going to be, um, be sewing. And what that does normally is it allows you to tack down your fabric. In this scenario, what it's going to allow me to do is understand where the placement is of where I need to put my fabric. Um, and it does that for, you know, whenever you're using it normally too. But um, where I'm going to put this webbing, it'll show me where the name is going to be. And then that will allow me to go ahead and place um, the stabilizer or place the fabric on there. And then in addition to that, it'll allow me where to see where I am going to cut the hole out for it. So let me go ahead and I'm going to do the tack down stitch here. Um, and like I said, it's going to go just where the name is. So I'm going to go ahead and do that tack down. I'm going to go ahead and move this to the trim position. I like the trim position because it just brings everything closer to me. So what I am going to do is, as you can see, the name here is going to be directly in this box right here where it, tacked, where it, where it did the tack down stitch. So if I was not going to cut anything out, I could just put the webbing on here just like that, and it would put that name right on the webbing. But let's say you didn't have water soluble um, stabilizer and you did not want stabilizer to be showing on the back. Um, you, what you can do, and I just take a seam ripper or any um, scissors, for example, to go ahead and just take these simple scissors and I cut within that box because, again, that's where the name is going to be. Is going to be stitching and if I don't want any stabilizer okay so I cut a whole out and what that does is it allows me to basically lay this right in that hole. And when it stitches, it's just gonna stitch on the actual webbing. But how do I secure this? Because there's no stabilizer, right? So I mentioned utilizing double-sided tape, um, which I am going to do here. And when I first, so again, I'm gonna tell you what I did whenever I, very, I did this for the very first time. I like super secured this, okay? So I am going to put double-sided tape here. 
So it's on the top or on the bottom, I guess, in this, in this scenario, on the top. And then I'm also going to put it on both sides, okay? Um, and that just keeps that, that webbing in place, okay? So I'm going to put it right. So I am now going to go ahead and lay my webbing out here and attach it to that double sided tape. This one was too close. Okay, it's fine. I'm just gonna go ahead and attach it. There we go. All right, so this is secure. Um, and then in addition to that, I'm still going to pin it. So when I pin it, I pin through the stabilizer here first. So it's all, it's still kind of just floating in that stabilizer, right? And then through the other side of the stabilizer, okay? So that it's on there. And you don't keep these pins in. Um, you, you're going to take them out. So I do one. So there's already stabilizer here because that's where the double sided tape is. So I just put this through. Do one at the top, one at the bottom, and a couple in between. And I actually kind of try to alternate which direction these needles are going. You don't need to do that, but. I do. Okay, so you see how it's going through both sides of the stabilizer. So even though it's not on stabilizer, it's still attached to the stabilizer because really all the stabilizer is doing in this scenario is keeping that webbing moving with the machine. Okay. All right. So now that I have this all attached, what I do is I do um, the side is not great, but bear with me. Okay. I do another tack down stitch. Again, this first way I'm going above and beyond as far as the precautions go. Okay. So I'm going to do another tack down stitch. And all that's doing is attaching the bottom and it is so easy to a tack down stitch is basically a basting stitch right it's a temporary stitch so all it's doing is going to tack down by fabric again so it's really not that um hard to take out later and again you're only going to be taking out of the top and the bottom all right so now i'm going to go ahead and start stitching my name so these needles, keep in mind, you want to take them out if they're gonna get in the way. So when you are doing it this way, you want to go ahead and remove those needles if the pattern is getting close, okay? And if it looks like it's going to go over one of those needles. You can pause your machine to take it out temporarily. And then if you have to hold it, you can hold it. If not, just move the needle to a different place when you do that. Okay, so as I mentioned, you may have to move these needles as you're doing a stitch. So I know that this needle is going to be away whenever it does, in the way whenever it does this next letter. So I'm going to go ahead and move my um, move my hoop here to the trim position, and then I'm going to go ahead and cut the stitch because we don't need it. Now I'm going to move this needle right where this A is, so it's out of the way, but it's still holding down my webbing here, okay?
And then, like I said, I just moved it long enough for us to do the next letter. So I'm gonna go ahead and move it back to the stitch position. I'm gonna grab this thread so it doesn't get all stitched in there. And I'm gonna go ahead and start with the next letter again. So if let's say, um, if let's say there wasn't a better place for you to keep your needle, all you would have to do is you could take the needle out like this, right? And then as if you were better than I was, I'm afraid of this, the sticky tape, you could hold it on there. So I tried to get way too close in order to not say, or to not waste space. And then you would, you could just like hold it somewhere in place. Okay. And you're not, I'm not holding it a lot. All I'm doing is hold, like just holding it down the littlest bit. And then again, what, once it's done stitching, you can put that needle back in. I don't know why I stopped it, sorry. All right, so now that I was done with that letter, I'm going to go ahead and you can put that needle back in place, right? Because it is done. And that just secures it down again, okay? I'm going to keep going. Okay, so we are done. So I'm gonna go ahead and move this back to the trim position. I'm gonna take out all these needles here. And you will see like you, with that tacked down stitch, this is still like pretty, I mean, it's solid on there. Um, all right, so all I need to do now is cut out that And then you may find at the bottom of it that tack down stitch is, is on the, the um, stabilizer a little bit. Just cut it off. Okay. Like this is a like there we go, Sarah. So the benefit of doing it this way is really if you don't have. Um, is if you don't have stabilizer or water soluble stabilizer because that's what I use and you don't if you don't want stabilizer on the back of, it, of these I mean you're not like completely wearing these so it's not like you need to be worried about a bunch of like hard use or anything like that so um you should be fine I'm just cutting the threads on the back really fast so um again all I would do at this point so you take it off Sorry, all I do at this point is remove this basting stitch on the bottom here. And if it was on the top, I would remove that. But I mean, it came out so easily. And then trim up some of the threads in between the letters. But again, you don't even need to put this in water or anything. You don't need to remove any stabilizer because there's nothing on the back. Yeah, it's just already stitched on the back. Okay, how cool is that? All right, so now I'm gonna show you the second way to go ahead and do this, and that is with water-soluble stabilizer. Um, so I'm going to input, a lot of it's gonna be similar, but it's gonna be so much faster, okay? So I'm gonna put the name on here that we need, just like I did the last time. Um, and I'm going to move it in the appropriate spot. So let's say I want it to go right here. 
We'll just keep it there. I'm going to do a tack down stitch again so I know which webbing or where to put my webbing. So his name is much smaller, but um, regardless, it'll still show you what to do. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and move this in the trim position. And then find my other piece of webbing here. Oh yeah, on my lap. All right, so all I do now, and this is what I do currently, if you still wanted to use double-sided tape, you could. Um, all I do currently, is pin this webbing directly into the stabilizer. Um, on the top and the bottom. So it's on there. And if this were a longer name, like I would put one in between, you know, a couple in between where it starts and stops. Okay. So we'll go ahead and do that here. I'm going to go ahead and put one in the middle. You don't need one because I don't need one because this is such a short name. But then I'm going to make sure that this is all lined up in between those tack down stitches, right? Um, and then that's all I do. I don't use any double sided tape anymore. I just pin it to the stabilizer, okay? Um, and then I'm gonna do the tack, I do still do the tack down stitch. You don't necessarily need to do that um, if you feel comfortable, but I, I just think the tack down stitch is easy. Might as well put it on there. Um, because this is water soluble, I'm not gonna have to readjust these pins anymore. Whenever it gets close to a pin, I'm just gonna take it out because that stitch is gonna be secured by the stabilizer now because there's not a hole so it's almost like the whenever it's stitching it's creating its own tack it's tacking it down so you don't like as you remove a pin as it gets in the way you don't need to replace it anymore so um i am going to go ahead and do that tack down and stitch again And then I'm going to go ahead and start doing my embroidery. And then again, if you saw that that needle next to your letter was getting in the way, all you have to do as you go, like, let's say it was a longer name and you're getting further down, all you have to do is just remove it, right? Because now this thread here is tacking down to that water-soluble stabilizer. So if I had five pins, as it was stitching, I would remove the pin as it goes down, each pin as it goes down. So the removal of this is going to be a little bit different. I'm still going to go in the trim position here, um, but I'm done. So I could take just take the hoop off. But um, the only thing different about the removal is because this is water soluble. All I'm going to do is just cut it off. 
of yarn. And then because it's water soluble, I'm gonna, I would go put it in water. Um, I do try to get as much of the water soluble off as I can, um, just because it makes removing the water soluble faster. All right, so I showed you two different fonts, two different ways to do it. Um, so this one, you would remove the stabilizer if you had just regular um, stabilizer. I would say even like a strong stabilizer might be good because it's going to hold it more securely. Um, and then a um, water soluble stabilizer. So all I would do would be go soak this in water. It would remove the stabilizer on the back. Um, and then you would again have the same result, nothing on the back of it. So, um, all right. So I, um, I hope this video answered a lot of your questions. Um, um, I think, I think that's almost everything. So, um, I, so just, just a plug in here for you. Um, I'm starting this YouTube channel as help. This YouTube channel will consist of a ton of different things. I just recently opened my own online boutique. So a few of my videos will be about that. If that's something that interests you. Um, feel free to subscribe. I'm going to be doing videos about how to make a website, how to track inventory. So if you're watching this and you're a business owner or you want to be a business owner, and um, it doesn't matter what type of uh, business you're doing, building a website um, is pretty similar. Tracking inventory is pretty similar. Adding SKUs is pretty similar. Um, all of those things are going to be beneficial to you, even though they may be related around a different type of business. Um, and then I'm going to add the link for obviously the nylon um, webbing that I talked about the website. I'm going to add the link to the um, to the name editor that I utilized in here. Um, and then I think that I think that's really about it. I'll include my email address in case you guys have any further questions. Um, I also have a business page, a couple business pages. I'll include that on on there um, so that you can reach out to me. Um, on the business page too. If you're, if you prefer Facebook, I should be available for you. So I hope this really helped you out. If you have any further questions, please leave them in the comments. If you liked any part of this video or if any part of this video is helpful, please like, um, like the video. Um, and again, if there's anything specific where you have questions about, um, you know, whether it's just business in general or specific to embroidery or sewing, um, I'm going to do a serger video. Uh, things like that, um, please leave those in the comments and I'll make sure that that's a video I include. So thank you so much for sticking around. Bye. All right. So um, one thing I, before I show you how to actually download the file and um, actually go through there, I did talk about how I'm going to show you a um, where I purchased my nylon webbing. So before I get off of the web page, I want to make sure that I, I touch on that. So um, if you are ever looking for nylon webbing, again, I am not associated with uh, this company by any means, but this um, is Country Brook Design. I will link the uh, website in the description below. So with Country Brook Design, they have pretty much anything and everything when it comes to um, making dog collars. So